All right, all right. God bless each and every one of you out there in Christ Jesus. This is Brother Ron. I'm back at you again with another video in reference to this Holy Bible Journey series. Uh, we are continuing with the book of Proverbs. And so uh, one of the things that uh, we have been trying to communicate is the need to protect ourselves uh, by the leadership of the Spirit of God, the, the need to walk in levels of wisdom, to understand the devices of the devil, the devices of the enemy, uh, the lifestyle that we ought to live that has begun through covenant through the Lord Christ Jesus, uh, the different things that we do on a day-to-day -day basis that enables us to uh, take up spiritual arms and warfare against the unclean uh, and uh, unseen spiritual powers um, throughout the world. We know that the word of God tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, not against hu not against humans, uh, but against powers, against principalities, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And so there is uh, a multitude of wisdom um, understanding that God gives us beyond the surface of what we see, uh, the inner workings of a thing, the uh, ways in which something should function, uh, uh, knowledge that God gives us in order to benefit in uh, the many things that we do, in order to ensure that our lives are being steered by him in a direction that's going to ultimately benefit us eternally. And so God is doing a multitude of uh, miraculous works in the lives of, the, of those that are born again. Uh, and, and as they journey, as the people of God, the sons and daughters of God, um, journey through their life of faith, they uh, exhibit the multitudes of things that Jesus says would happen in their lives as a testimony and as a statement of glory to the God that saved them. And so God is granting wisdom on many levels to ensure that we are protected from the wiles, from the schemes, from the plans, from the confusion, from the sabotage of the enemy. And so God is strengthening the people of God um, to discern, uh, to uh, watch where they step, they're uh, being protected uh, even by supernatural beings, by angels. Um, there are all sorts of levels of protection that God has laid forth for the people of God. The people of God are uh, the ones in which God wants to protect because he has an investment. There is a reservation. There are specific things that are um, treasures um, that are working out in the people of God that are essential uh, before the eyes of God because he plans on ensuring that the, 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 the very new world in which he's establishing has those people occupying it. And so this world is full of uh, specific um, 
obstacles that the sons and daughters of God have to hurdle over, have to get through, have to conquer, have to overcome, have to subdue, have to have dominion over. So many different things that we have to apply spiritual wisdom to in order to ensure that we are forever moving in this wonderful direction towards the ultimate apprehension of uh, the uh, inheritance of salvation that God wants to give us in the end as we endure. And so it's a blessing uh, to be able to see both uh, naturally and spiritually. Many people, they rely on their natural sight primarily, but the sons and daughters of God, we see spiritually. Also, we uh, desire that God leads us, that he helps us to be able to decode, to be able to unravel, uh, be able to see beyond the uh, condition of the things around us <clears throat> in order to know how to navigate, navigate with accuracy. And so God is giving out heavenly wisdom. There, there are uh, grades of wisdom that God is pouring out because uh, there are a multitude of things and ways and uh, aspects uh, of life that we must, um, through the power of God, uh, subdue. And so uh, I want to talk about, um, we've been talking about the strange woman. We've been talking about the strange man. You know, one of, of course, the main um, example that the book of Proverbs ha that have been, um, that has been being referred to in um, chapters five, six, seven, eight, in nine, there's been this theme of the strange woman and how uh, she steals uh, from the impressionable, how she steals from uh, th those that are simple. She steals. She, um, like the devil, she steal, kills, and destroys. She's, uh, and so. There's a wisdom, a woman of wisdom that uh, we submit to. We talked about the two women uh, at the beginning of this series, uh, the beginning of this particular book, uh, this book part of the series. Uh, and in the in in the beginning of Proverbs, that's what we're being enlightened to: the fact that there's. Uh, the woman of wisdom and the strange woman. And so as we listen to uh, the woman of wisdom who cries out, who gives us instruction, who, who gives us counsel, um, we, uh, and we exemplify um, her ways, we exemplify the ways of God, we exemplify the wisdom, the knowledge, the obedience towards God, then there is a pattern, there is a way that our life is shaped and uh, goes in the direction of that ultimately pleases God. But then you have the, the flesh, you have the, um, the carnal, the earthly, uh, you have the promptings of the evil one, you have all of these other aspects that we ought to refrain from. Um, and so the strange woman wants to pollute the identity, the uh, inner uh, capacity and, 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 and reality of who, uh, of the people who listen to her. And so we refrain from the strange voices, the strange identities. And so God is protecting his people. He's protecting the sons and daughters of God. He's ensuring that they are um, uh, secure. And so, uh, so I, I want to talk about ultimately the spirit of Amnon. So there is, um, 
is one of the sons of King David who uh, is called Amnon and he has a lust problem. He has a, uh, a severe lust problem to the degree that he violates one of the very daughters of King David. And this causes a uh, ripple effect of problems under uh, uh, King David. And so the, uh, the things that the Word of God explains to us in reference to the book of Proverbs is the fact that, as a matter of fact, let's go to um, the book of Proverbs. Let's look at chapter 6. We've been um, covering chapter 5, 6, and 7 as of late. But let's look at some of the verbiage in um, chapter 6. It says, let's skip down to... Uh, verse um, verse 32, but whosoever committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. He that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. Uh, a wound and dishonor shall he get, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. For jealousy is the rage of a man. Therefore, he will not spare in the day of vengeance. He will not regard any ransom. Neither will the, he rest content, though, um, though thou givest many gifts. Uh, there's other... Um, um, other uh, specific verses that um, are that ought to be remembered um, because lust is a battle that has to be fought. It, it, there is a conquering of it. Uh, now, it doesn't mean that as you grow, there aren't other things that try to appease you or uh, try to uh, um, fit themselves into your appetite and you have to fight them off as well. Uh, it says here in verse um, 24, uh, to keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of the strange woman, lust not after her beauty in thine heart, uh, neither let her take thee with her eyelids for by before by. Uh, means of a horse woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. Um, so, so that right there, and what we've read already, uh, is talking about the stealing that happens. Because one of the things that a man of God and a woman of God are, are vessels of honor. They're vessels of honor, and they ought to keep their honor. We talked about in um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 how there is a sanctification um, in uh, and and a honor in keeping one's vessel and ensuring that you keep yourself until the time of marriage. That you keep yourself. That you. Um, don't allow yourself to venture off into the very characteristics that will cause you to compromise and uh, do things that will uh, cause you to uh, defile the very vessel in which God says ought to remain clean. Uh, the Word of God says our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Um, and, and so uh, we are given our bodies. Our bodies are not our own. Uh, our bodies are, uh, in a sense, loaned to us, given to us. And as we grow in godliness, there are rewards given to us as far as uh, greater levels or conditions of our body that is a... Uh, a blessing for the rightful handling of this vessel because we we know that God is looking at us from a 
uh, from an investment perspective, but not just from, you know, because I don't want to sound like God looks at us from the perspective of, of business. No, he, he, he loves his creation. He loves his design. He, you know, like an artist who draws something on a piece of paper and kind of looks at it and just is kind of satisfied by the elegance of it. Or some um, architect who uh, draws out a plan and he, you know, contracts with some contractors that builds the building and they look at the building and they're like, oh, it's finally finished. It looks awesome. Uh, you know, uh, or... Someone who, uh, you know, um, uh, creates some invention uh, and uh, the invention um, is uh, amazingly done and it aids millions of people uh, because of its use and its um, supply and demand, the, the demand of it being so high and it being supplied uh, to, to help so many millions or whatnot. And so there's a uh, happiness, there is a, uh, a goodness, there is a joy that can be um, apprehended when um, the object or whatever it is um, meets the requirements when it when it does what it's supposed to do and so god wants uh, the people human beings to guard themselves to uh have necessary wisdom within us to guard us from what the enemy wants to do in reference to the lion who's roaming about uh looking to see whom he may devour um you know uh, and, and so God is giving us, instilling in us, giving us dreams and visions and helping us uh, and, and by uh, establishing uh, grace and power and authority. Um, all of these different supernatural things that God is doing throughout time and uh, embedding in us the grace to uh, uh, overcome any of the obstacles that are before us. All of these things are important and God is uh, happy when we overcome and succeed and get past these barriers that want to block us from the blessings that God wants to pour out upon us. So let's go to, um, uh, let's see here. Let's go to... So let's, let's talk about um, Amnon, Amnon, um, and the spirit, the spirit of Amnon, um, the the spirit, and when, when we say spirit of, we, we're talking about uh, the nature, the conduct, the 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 identity. That there is a identity at times within what we do and so there can be proverbs that are created that show that this is the characteristic of this person who had that identity he 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 allowed that i that 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 conduct to consume him and ultimately cause him to walk in a way that now is a proverb concerning the uh, concerning a short saying that describes uh, multiple characteristics because, because proverbs are in a sense the abbreviations of a lifetime of action proverbs are the abbreviation or the short sentences of long uh, trains of thought or long uh, acts and characteristics that uh, bring forth a, a measure of understanding uh, that is important to gather as to know that, oh, this is what happens when we do this, or that is going to be the result when uh, 
we entertain this. And so there is a science behind the, the actions uh, that people do. There's a science. There is a, uh, there is a, there is a result that manifests through the application of what people do. So, uh, so this, so God wants to give us superior knowledge, uh, far beyond the worldly wisdom that the people of the world think is going to ultimately benefit them, and He wants to give us supernatural knowledge that's going to benefit us on an eternal plane, and so. Um, so, so, so proverbs are I extremely important uh, so that we can know. Uh, so, the, so that there's are there, so that there are, there are levels of the future that we can see because we understand that principles uh, are the framework uh, that cause the result of things to uh, come to pass or manifest. So there's an infrastructure that God creates. There's in the spirit, there are foundational principles and, and all sorts of things that God is ensuring that we know in advance so that we can apply the right actions so that we can get the spiritually blessed outcomes that God desires. So when it comes to the the the, the demolishing of lust, the demolishing of or or the building up of the righteous characteristics that don't allow lust to have any access to then lead a person along a path that causes them to reap harm and destruction and damage. So one of the sons of King David here, Amnon, um, he has this uh, lust problem and he is actually lusting after. Uh, he desires to be intimately with his own sister, uh, half-sister. Uh, and so you have this man, Jonadab, who is, a, it says he's a subtle man. He's a very subtle man. We know that word subtle is said about the devil. The devil is subtle as well. And so Jonadab sees, um, you know, that Amnon, you know, who is the son of a king, he sees him in a um, down and out, a sad, a depressed, a bothered mood attitude. And he asks him, hey, so why is the, the king's son um, uh, uh, attitude this way, acting this way? Um, down and depressed. How how is that possible? You have access to anything that you would want. Uh, so why aren't you enjoying yourself and just uh, uh, being in the uplifted mood that you should be? And so uh, so Amnon he confides in uh, Jonadab. He he confides in him. He um, doesn't uh, his lust um, doesn't allow him to see that it's a shameful um, act to even tell Jonadab that he desires Tamar, his half sister, uh, which is is the sister of Absalom, and so she's obviously a, a beautiful young woman. Uh, because we know it says that Absalom was a very attractive um, young man uh, with, uh, you know, long, thick hair. Um, and so he, uh, uh, meaning um, Amnon, he desires to be with uh, Tamar. And 
but he desires her um, and he knows that his what he would consider love for her is more more of more romantic than it is actual um, true love. It's it, it's not the lifelong love type love, and so this is a lust love. It's a lust. It's a desire uh, that comes from uh, the inner soul that has been perverted. So now there's, the, of course, you have in man. Let's talk about this for a second. In man, we know that there uh, we, we have three parts in us. Let's talk about lust for a second. So in man, uh, there is the natural body. There is the soul and there is the spirit. So uh, the soul is a, in reference to biological terms, in a sense, it, it's, it's more so the software of the body. So let, let me explain that because I believe it's necessary. So, when, so I'm comparing it to like a, a device or whether it be a phone or whether it be um, you know, a computer and monitor, uh, whether it be um, um, you know, some sort of tablet um, or even a, a, a camera. There are the hardware part. There's the hardware part, which is the physically touched part the hardware part, and then you have the software part that when you uh, embed, I guess, the electricity in, uh, when you embed certain components in, there's a picture that can come about. There, uh, you, you can, um, uh, with our phones nowadays, you, you can, um, you know, uh, the, the visual part, the, the applications part, is what you see in what you entertain, right? Or what entertains you. So you you see that the software part is the picture part, is the animate part, is the the, the very part that um, uh, manifests uh, from the collection of hardware parts that are together. So so there's a working together of the software part and the hardware part of an object. So mankind in a, in a way is similar in the sense that we have a hardware part uh, in our bodies, our, our uh, anatomy, right? But then we also have the mind, the will, and the emotions. We have the personality. All of these things are intangible. So there's a intangible, there's a, uh, the, the reality that you can't touch the personality. You can't touch the emotions. You can't touch um, uh, the uh, mind in a sense. You can touch the brain, but you can't touch the mind. Uh, you, you, can, uh, you, you can't touch the will, you know? So there's these uh, inanimate. There's these uh, like these parts of us that you can't touch. Uh, they're the software parts of our body. So the emotions, the uh, the um, the mind, the the will. Uh, you know, there's these other aspects of us that come together to describe the animate aspect of us um that's the the personality oh he's individual in his personality his personality is like this he's this way he does this he does that and he does this and he's a, he does that so that's his person his person his individual personality is this way so so the devil wants to pollute the soul the f so there's the flesh that's also located in the soul. So there, so God wants the Holy Spirit 
to come inside of us and join together with our human spirit and begin a battle against the soul, a, a, a battle to recreate the soul, not to completely annihilate the soul, but to recreate the soul after the identity of God. And so there's a transformation of, in a sense, the spirit, uh, the spirit man. There's a, there's a spirit in you that's being transformed and your soul that there's an interchangeable aspect of it, but it's being transformed. So your personality is being transformed. Your uh, emotions are being uh, transformed, are being shaped, um, reshaped. Your um, there are multitudes of things about you. Your will is being God's will instead of your will. You know, actually, your will is being uh, mutated and transformed into a will that matches God's will. So your will is for God's will to manifest. So everything about your will that's not like God's will. It transforms to be like God's will as God pours out his transformation power upon us. As we exemplify wisdom and grow in the knowledge of God and live out the purpose that God has placed for us in, in this life. And so, so, so as we described the, the, the three elements here, the spirit, um, the soul, and the physical body. So there's the physical hardware, the physical hardware, you know, and then there's the inner personality, the inner emotions, the inner mind, the inner will, um, you know, all of that that's, be, that's under um, subjection of or supposed to be under the, under the subjection of the spirit man. Uh, un, under the Holy Spirit that comes to strengthen our spirit to uh, transform and to enable the soul to undergo uh, strategic levels of transformation towards the resemblance of us like Jesus. And so, so, so we have this huge problem with Amnon. He is told by Jonadab that he he causes, and this this is I guess this is one of the reasons why they say he's a subtle man. Um, he um, is in the situ he, he causes um, Amnon to un undergo a plan. So he creates a plan for. Uh, Amnon, and the plan is ultimately to act as if he's sick, and to get permission from the king, King David, so that Tamar, his half sister, would um, kindly come and serve him, and help him to overcome the supposed sickness that he's um, undergone. And so um, so this is the plot. So they get the permission of the king. Um, the, the, the plan is underway. Tamar is on the way to begin to nurse the um, supposedly sick um, Amnon. Uh, and so when she arrives, Amnon, you know, says to all of the guards to leave the room, <clears throat> to leave the room. And maybe that should have been a sign right there to uh, Tamar. Hey, 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 why, why are the men leaving? Um, hey, you guys stay. I know he told you to go, but you all stay here. You stay. Um, I don't know what's going on here. Um, why would they all have to leave, you know? And so maybe she could have left with the guards, you know, like, hey, I, I'm not comfortable, you know. But she stays because she is 
innocent. She's pure. She's uh, the daughter of a king. And so her objective is to nurse him. She heard that he's in jeopardy and she wants to be uh, uh, someone who aids him to uh, get back to the place that he um, ought to be as a strong young man. Uh, but then uh, after all the, the guards leave the room, he uh, grabs her. He, he grabs her. Um, he, she, she's trying to, um, um, you know, uh, prepare the food for him and, and trying to uh, ensure that he um, eats well. Um, and all the while, his, his facial expressions, what he's uh, giving off, he's trying to um, seduce her into causing his fantasy to come to life uh, because he has a some fantasy of uh, a story in his mind concerning who she is and uh, con concerning what he wants to how he wants to uh, deal with her or be with her he has this fantasy that he wants to manifest that he wants to create and so this is what lust does lust is very is lust lust um brother lust sister is fantasy one of the things about lust is that it's akin to fantasy it's a partner with fantasy and God wants the people of God to avoid the corruption of this fantasy with the knowledge of the word of God, with the reality of the truth of God's word, to help them to not put themselves in predicaments to enable them to be a slave to some fake movie in their minds. And so let, let's read some of this. Let's read some of this. Um, let, let's start. I, I, I don't know where to start. Let's start at verse six. So Amnon lay down and made himself sick. And when the king was come to see him, Amnon said unto the king, I pray thee, let Tamar, my sister, come and make me a couple of cakes in my sight, and I may eat at her hand. Uh, of course, he gets the permission of King David. Then, Dave, then David sent home to Tamar, saying, Go now to thy brother Amnon's house and dress him meat. So Tamar went to her brother Amnon's house, and he was laid down, and she took flour and kneaded it, and made cakes in his sight, and did bake the cakes. And um, she took a pan and poured them out uh, before him, but he refused to eat. And Amnon said, have out all the men from me. And they went out every man from him, and Amnon said unto Tamar, bring the meat into the chamber, and I may uh, that I may eat of thine hand. And Tamar took the cakes which she had made and brought them into the chamber to Amnon her brother. And when she had brought them unto him to eat, he took hold of her and said unto her, Come lie with me, my sister. And she uh, answered him. Uh, nay, my brother, do not force me, for no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Uh, do not this, uh, do not thou this folly. And I, um, and I, whether shall I cause uh, my shame to go? And as for thee, thou shalt be as one of the fools in Israel. 
Now, therefore, I pray thee, speak unto the king, for he will not withhold me from thee. Uh, Howbeit he would not hearken unto her, but being stronger than she, uh, forced her and lie with her. And Amnon hated her exceedingly, so that the hatred wherewith he hated her was greater than the love wherewith he had loved her. And Amnon said unto her, Arise and be gone. And she said unto him, There is no cause. This evil in sending me away is greater than the other that thou didst unto me. But he would not hearken unto her. Then he called his servant that ministered unto him and said, Put now this woman out from me and bolt the door after her. And she, uh, uh, and she had a garment of diverse colors upon her. For with such robes uh, were the king's daughters that were virgins of periled. Uh, then his servant brought her out and bolted the door after her, and Tamar put on ashes on her head and rent her garment of diverse colors that were that was on her and laid her hand on her head and went on crying. And so, so we, we see that the deception is... In Amnon's mind, the lust uh, and the plan against uh, Tamar uh, was fabricated. It was created, uh, of course, with the aid of Jonadab, and um, and ultimately, this was the internal uh, abomination of a plot that was created in his mind but in his mind he obviously had the lust made it more romantic in his mind it, it so he was in a sense a murderer but he was in his mind not and so this so he then allows himself to go through with the plan to unveil the plan. So he says to her directly for her to come and to do only what married individuals should do, right? So he ultimately um, does not want to so because he this the because the lust in him does not want to commit. The commitment is a sign of true love. The commitment, the laying down of one's life. The the there, there is a a understanding that those who truly want to uh be with someone, they understand the level of sacrifice that's going to take. It, there is a uh, uh, an identity that one has to have. There is structure. There is preparation. There is uh, uh, grace. There is permission even that one has to arrive to to understand that this is acceptable. And so this is one of the reasons why uh, Tamar, in her, uh, in the manifestation of his nefarious plan, she she didn't see it coming, and so what she does is she's grappling for excuses here. She's trying to figure out what she can say and what she can do to get out of the vicinity, to get out of the situation. So she says, you know, knowing that her father would not have accepted, you know, that Amnon marry um, Tamar, she says, well, ask the, you know, the king for me. Ask my father for me. He wouldn't um, keep me from you because she knows that that would be something that 
uh, that he's an authority figure. She she goes directly to the authority figure. She goes directly to God, uh, or not God, but she goes directly to uh, the Father because she knows there's a law. There's a law. She 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 submits to the law. She says this should not. This this is something that ought not be done in Israel. This is something that is not of the laws of God. This is something that is contrary, abominable. Um, this is something that is void of the wisdom that uh, the Word of God um, teaches the children of Israel. And so she uh, she's making these pleas, you know, um, don't force me. Why? Because that's uh, something evil, you know. Uh, don't uh, uh, you know? Ask my father for me. He wouldn't. He won't withhold me from you. Yeah, because that's another uh, level uh, or another plea, another action of of bringing some form of sobriety to his mind. Because she knows uh, at this point that he is hypnotized by lust. He's he's he's. Uh, um, He's under the intoxication of that lust. And so she's making all of these pleas, but nothing is seeming to ultimately work. He is dead set in going in the direction of violating his half-sister. And he does. Uh, and one of the, I think, very important things to mention here is that when he is done with her, he says, uh, um, he says to her um, for her to get out, basically, for her to get out. And for, and so her response to that is that the fact that you're telling me to get out is a worse crime the fact that you're trying to push me out the fact that you're trying to get rid of me uh the the fact that you're trying to discard me is a worse crime than you doing the first abominable act to me why because we talked about before how the reality is when someone connects with someone else when a man connects with a woman vice versa that is considered marriage before the sight of god that's marriage your your body fuses in the sense that there is a fusing this is how soul ties are created now we know there are good soul ties and there are bad soul ties of course um there are many different things uh it doesn't have to be the connection uh but there are many different things that uh, cause soul ties to be born. You know, of course, you have soul ties between um, parents and their children. You have soul ties uh, bet uh, that are good. You have soul ties between friends, you know, uh, which enable relationships to function better. You have uh, King David and Jonathan who had a, a, an awesome um, soul tie, a covenant between one, uh, a level of their um, relationship that was it, it said it exceeded that of a man and, uh, and, a, and of a woman. Um, and, and so that there's a bond, there's a special bond. So not all soul ties are bad, but the ones that are bad in, in reference to the ones that come about through the breaking of laws, the breaking of boundaries, the breaking or the exceeding beyond the restrictions uh, that we ought to have so that we can uphold the wisdom, uphold the principles, uphold the righteous acts that ultimately please God, that God set from the foundations of the world for mankind to benefit from. Uh, th these things are important for us to hearken to, right? So, so, uh, so there are good soul ties and there are bad soul ties. And so the, the, the so now with, um, this situation, 
you have uh, Tamar who says that the f so because he because Amnon had done this to her, according to the reality of what we know, he t or she takes it as uh, uh, Tamar takes it as okay. So we're connected now. So okay. So now I guess I'm your wife, um, even though you uh, took me in a dishonorable way. You know, I, I guess you know, you know, we're connected for life now. You know, and so for him to say, for her to leave, for her to go away from him it's a far greater violation in her mind because there was no purpose there was no commitment purpose there was no true uh, design of the plan there was no real um, uh, um, reason be beyond the lust it, it was just uh, pleasure based it, it was not love at all it was the desire to uh, have her but not commit to her uh, and, and so the the fantasy in his mind came to an, an, an abrupt stop um, stop it came to a uh, you know the illusion was um, foiled you know that like, oh Oh, that's what it is. And so now he is in a position to where now he has a hatred for her. He has a hatred that the the the, the romantic novel, the romance novel didn't pan out the way the lust painted it in his mind. The lust painted it in his mind a particular way, but because it didn't pan out and he had to go to the extent of forcing her to be with him, it, it he 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 now there was a great hatred a great loathing um uh uh for her uh and so this was uh you know of course some of the reasons why he just you know wanted to cast her off to not be bothered with her anymore and so this was a great a, a great offense for something as trivial as a temporary satisfaction. It, it, it was so abominable in her sight. Her, her whole life had been derailed because of this act of selfishness. This, and, and so, so the, the mind of the people of this world are being lured in that in that direction of the Amnon spirit. The fantasy, the lust fantasy, the the different corruption, the uh, uh, the pornographic uh, 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 reality of what the world is trying to uh, spoil the people of this world with. At very young ages, very young ages, people are destroying, uh, you know, others. You know, uh, many people who uh, deal with all sorts of homosexual um, behaviors or many people who deal with um, all sorts of... Uh, internal battles and confusions and um, different levels of demonic tormenting uh, spirits um, that uh, uh, molest them in their sleep and, and all sorts of things. Um, the desire to um, uh, um, do all sorts of uh, masturbation like acts and, and corruption it, it comes from the spirits that are trying to steer the people in this generation into a 
uh, Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, and, and um, Zeboim, um, uh, like nature. Uh, the, the, the Sodom and Gomorrah, Adam and Zeboim, the, these are nations that have become proverbs, right? They have become proverbs. But the spirit of these nations have have not disappeared. The spirit of these nations ultimately are carried from nation to nation through the spirits that provoke those nations in the first place, that provoke those nations to carry out the the self pleasure, the um, the the corrupt. Um, behavior that discarded the right characteristics of God that God wanted man to uphold and see the blessings that come from that. And so there are many cultures of old that these unclean spirits are bringing to current cultures, many attributes of the cultures of old that are being rebirthed in the modern nations of today, uh, influencing the people uh, to do things under new names, but the same spirit, under um, uh, new um, sort in, uh, inventions or characteristics or ways or methods, but under the same demonic authorities. And so the people of God, through wisdom and understanding, we keep ourselves blameless. We keep our bodies secure and, and protected from the influence, from the corruption. This is why we, uh, uh, you know, meditate on the word of God day and night. We allow the word of God to flood our minds and not let our minds be empty and vacant vessels to be infiltrated by the corruption of the perverse modern day societies. God is wanting us to ensure that we are possessing our souls. You know, the word of God, uh, Paul uh, tells us that, that we ought to be people that handle, that guard, that have grips on our on on the godly development of our personality and not have these fantasy like uh, rom romance novels in our minds that cause us to do evil to others you know many people there's many um uh supposed men of god throughout the nations, you know, in these foreign countries, you know, of course you have them in America, but you have them in Africa, you have them in Asian countries, you have them um, in northern countries, like, like uh, northern continents, Europe, and, and you have them in the islands, you know, you have them on the west coast of the world. Um, you know, you, you have them, and, and many of them find sinister, nefarious ways to justify how they are going to do things in very corrupted ways to entertain the flesh, to entertain the 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 sinful the sexual desires they 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 want to find loopholes and ways they can solidify the fantasies of their wicked hearts and so a denying of these gra these evil gratifications is uh, what God is demanding. There is a reshaping of the desire. There's a reshaping of how you think it ought to play out. There's a reshaping of that. There's a 
uh, uh, prioritizing the kingdom. There's a prioritizing the the things that we ought to think, that we ought to meditate on, that we ought to uh, um, walk by. There's there's a subtle, very demonic, under the radar corruption that is happening throughout the world, and this Amnon spirit is really devouring people, devouring people. This is why you can have, and, and it, this can be everywhere. And so this is why men of God have to be men of God, real men of God. The, 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 I'm not impressed by how much you know. I'm not impressed by, you know, certain things or whatnot uh, or where you claim you've been. Uh, there, there are specific things that are telltale signs that will show you, hey, that is suspicious. That's a red flag right there. Oh, he, ho she does this. Hmm. He does that. Hmm. Well, well, we, so, so now we, we, so now in that we are not ought to, we ought to not just live some in some uh, some super some super suspicious way but we ought to live in a way to where we are the examples of change the examples of righteousness the examples of stability the examples of how to ensure that we are living out the the identity of purity the identity of purity of heart, purity of, of true ability to demonstrate real love, to demonstrate the sacrifice uh, that comes with real love, the truth. You know, not the secret sins of dishonesty behind closed doors. You know, Amnon here is behind closed doors. You know, Amnon here has uh, a plot in his mind behind closed doors. But the revelation of the man of God and what he ought to do according to the word of God, <clears throat> the woman of God, according to what she ought to do according to the word of God is laid before us and we ought to see it in their testimony in their actions in what they exemplify and do we're not trying to create doctrine that's going to support wickedness that's going to support all manner of defilement down the road you know so god is in the business of making us pure, making us whole, making us individuals that will disclose our intentions. You know, that's why if, if a, a man's going to marry a woman, you know, it's not wrong for the woman or even the parents to say, hey, what's the purpose of this relationship? You know, what's what's the purpose? That Yeah, like, hey, hey, dad. Um, I think you're going overboard. No, no, he has the right. Hey, who who's this? What are y'all doing? W hey, what what's good? Hey, pull the cover out from the, this situation. Hey, what's happening here? Hey, because one of the things about you know marriage is that it's a public thing because. You, you have to ensure that everyone knows that, yeah, she's off the market. Yeah, everyone knows. Hey, hey, everybody. She's no longer single. Hey, everybody. He's no longer single. Right. Yeah. And, and so uh, many people are suffering from what happens when... Uh, they don't have the lack of the they don't have the wisdom they lack the wisdom and as we talked about in last the last um teaching how there is a conduct that the world is repetitively exercising 
which is a disconnect conduct, a disconnect doctrine. That's what that's what I want to call it, a disconnect doctrine to where there's a the where to where uh, casual coming together is a part of society and it's looked at as healthy. You know, masturbation is looked at as healthy, you know, scientifically explained, you know, um, divorce is looked at as, you know, not the overall goal, but if it happens, everybody walks away happy, you know, it's, yeah, it's normal, you know, th there is a normality of evil in the world. There's a normality. The superstars are teaching us that. The athletes are teaching us that. The, you know, everyone is teaching us that. The, 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 the divorce rate is crazy high, like 80% or something like that. Um, everything in the world, uh, the unclean spirits are attempting to to get the people so uh, broken to where they are incompatible. If a man and a woman of God are a man and a woman of God, there's no reason why they shouldn't be compatible. Because a man of God is a man of God and a woman of God is a woman of God. And if so, so he's going to be a husband. She's going to be a wife. And they know that the kingdom is their focus. The, the, the focus is to be who they need to be so that they can um, advance what they need to advance. So the kingdom of God has to be advanced because this earth is passing away. Things need to uh, be done as to prepare for the king that's going to reside on the earth. And so the fact that relationships are such a distraction, it's uh, something that has to now, people have to pay attention to it. People have to, oh, we, we wouldn't prioritize this normally. We wouldn't pr uh, 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 deal with this. We wouldn't even talk about it because it's something that's supposed to be natural, something that's supposed to be understood. But because of the defilement, because of what Satan is doing, because of the wickedness that is out there, because of the worldliness that is in the churches of this modern day, because of the 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 uh, deceitfulness that is happening, that is causing men, uh, certain ministers to have multiple wives at the same time, you know, uh, having, you know, a, a, a wife in the church, but yet also having girlfriends in the church, you know, many different wickedness that's happening that wisdom is crying out to us to protect us from. Wisdom is trying to protect us from the mutation of what should be, what is normal, what is sh uh, should be understood to where that's not a hindrance to the ministry that we are trying to ultimately do in the world. So the ministry, the advancement of the ministry of of, uh, of of God, the ministry of reconciling people to God is something that we ought to ensure that is being done. Uh, but, we, but there is so much corruption that is in the world that is being modeled by even the people that are in the church. And so there needs to be a sanctification, a, a, a returning back to the, the holy things of God, the righteous things of God, a turning back to the conduct that God approves of, that God blesses. God, God blesses a way. God blesses it. And so in that, God's trying to ensure that people are not hypnotized by this Amnon spirit, the spirit of Amnon that is trying to 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 uh, have some selfish gratification uh, towards, uh, but yet have his cake and eat it too. 
uh, oh yeah, I can do this. I can be this apostle. I can be this prophet. I can be this evangelist, but yet I can have a question mark relationship in reference to my personal life and no one is going to say anything about it. No, that ought not be, you know, uh, this over here is this way, uh, that, that's over here, that's that way. No one's going to say anything about it. Uh, and they better not say anything about it because I'm a man of God. No, that ought not be. It ought not be. God is holding everybody accountable who says that they are an example. If you're an example, then you have to be brought before the council and, yeah, scrutinized. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so God is ensuring that the spirit of Amnon is not uh, uh, defiling the, the people. God wants to, the, the, the grace that he is laid uh, within the people to be something that uh, creates strong roots and that blossoms into what God says it's supposed to look like, what's supposed to manifest, what's supposed to be identified as. And so God is doing a supernatural work and he wants uh, the strange woman not to be the counsel of the godly, not to be uh, uh, in operation amongst the congregation or the people. He wants a, a purity, a purity. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. So God is doing a miraculous, a wonderful, a uh, majestic, a, a uh, magnificent work in the world. And he's ensuring that there is manifold wisdom that is in possession of the men and women of God. Not the lust, not the soul ties, but deliverance from the situational soul ties of the past the casting out of those uh, behaviors, uh, the casting out of those mindsets, the casting out of those evil intentions, and the bringing in of the purity and the knowledge of God. One of the ways that you know you have a soul tie is when you're always dreaming of a previous relationship or you're always thinking about a previous relationship or you you're or you're always uh doing things that cause you to remember a previous relationship you hold on to items that were once owned by a previous person and so god wants to break the strongholds that are trying to connect you with a previous relationship. He wants you to tear up the pictures. He wants you to break the, the necklaces and the, and the watches. He wants you to, to, to throw away the old letters. He, he wants you to throw away the, the things that are causing you to create this romance novel in your mind. Uh, he, he wants you to get rid of the items that are trying to uh, keep the, 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 the soulish and biological connection alive. He wants to break that spiritual connection. There's a, there's a connection that God wants to break in reference to the old identity, your identity that was old, and what you think about the relational identity. Like, he wants to break that and cast that into the fire. God wants to make you a new man 
in the Lord, a new woman in the Lord, experiencing new experiences, coming together with a new man or woman of God, if you're allowed, and to become what God has ordained you to become. And so there's a reality that the soul ties are trying to recreate and keep a person in bondage to. But God is trying to make new what was old. If any man be in Christ or if any woman be in Christ, old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. There's a new identity, a new spiritual condition that God wants to make a reality in the mind and heart of the children of God through wisdom, through obedience, through love, through faith, through uh, the, sol the solidification of of the right identity in uh, the um, vessel of honor that God wants you to be. So yeah, God bless you. And um, that's it. If the Lord, if God would lead me to speak more in reference to this, um, we'll see by the grace of God. So as I always say, feet follows focus. So focus on the Lord Jesus Christ and your feet, my feet, our feet will follow in the mighty name of Jesus. Love you.